Hello dear students. So today we will discuss about the modeling of EEG signals. The concepts are very much similar what we have done in the modeling of biomedical or bio signals. But in this first we will discuss uh, about the brain computer interface. So a brain computer interface is a direct communication pathway between the brain and an external device. We can also refer it as BCI. So BCIs are often aimed at assisting, augmenting or repairing human cognitive or sensory motor functions. They are separated into three different approaches that are invasive BCIs, partially invasive and non-invasive BCIs. So you can see here that EEG mainly belongs to non-invasive type of brain computer interface. Invasive and partially invasive brain computer interfaces are accurate. However, there are risks of the infection and the damage. Furthermore, it requires the operation to set the electrodes in the head. On the other hand, non-invasive BCIs are inferior than invasive as in accuracy, but costs and risks are very low. Especially, EEG approach is the most studied potential non-invasive interface mainly due to its fine temporal resolution, ease of use, portability and low setup cost. So here you can see a brain computer interface loop. It involves timely handling of incoming data pre-processing, analysis, and then finally sending the outputs. This is a little bit more detailed diagram showing the brain-computer interface. Uh, you can see the blocks or the arrows which are in green. They represent the basic minimal uh, components that are required in BCI setup. Uh, then this feedback signal, if you see, this is additional for a neurofeedback system and then we have the storage elements and it is mainly the registration and storage of all data to reconstruct and analyze the neurofeedback system and these are the control you can see control feedback and optimization if it is required then we can keep this uh, feedback also and this is the control of, so if suppose we need some uh, therapeutic operator or experimental control, then you can use a, a external operator for this. Now let's begin with the modeling of EEG signals. We can have deterministic and stochastic models. And it depends upon the level of modeling and even, you know, we know that the pure biological EEG source is deterministic. Then also the amplifier digitization, it adds noise that is mainly a random kind of signal. So we'll mainly study in this about the stochastic models. They can be further linear stochastic models or it can be non-linear modeling of EEG signal. Now linear models include, we'll be, uh, keep our main focus on the linear models. Uh, in this we have autoregressive modeling that can be time varying, multivariate or AR modeling with impulse input. We can have in this another that is ARMA which includes autoregressive moving average modeling. Now, there can be time and frequency domain methods for the analysis of EEG signals and both these methods, they consider an EEG signal as a realization of a random process. 
So we know that random processes are characterized by probability distributions and their movements. For example, means, variance, skewness, kurtosis, or the correlation function and their Fourier spectra. In general, the analysis of these EEG signals by way of correlation has lost much of its interest with the advent of FFT as fast Fourier transform is less time consuming and also it is more powerful. In particular, it is difficult to determine from the autocorrelation function whether EEG signals contain more than one dominant rhythm. Although the FFT method, that is a frequency domain analysis, has been widely used to analyze EEG signals, yet it is not well suited to the non-stationary characteristics of the EEG signal. So in view of these limitations, new approaches in EEG analysis that offer promising perspectives are suggested. So in that we have a model-based method. Model-based signal analysis algorithms exploit which part of the signal is to be interpreted as noise and which part reflects the state of the system. In this, the basic underlying method for these new uh, model-based method is the parametric description of an EEG signal. So in this we have first is parametric model. In general, an EEG signal should be considered as a realization of a stochastic process. First, it will be assumed that the stochastic process responsible for the generation of the EEG is stationary and that the signal can be described by means of a parametric model such as ARMA or AR. Secondly, it will be considered how deviations from the stationary hypothesis which are commonly encountered in reality can be accounted for using other models characterized by their parameters. Now let's start with the theory of AR modeling, mainly the linear prediction theory. Then in next lecture, we will discuss about the AR model or we can say the autoregressive model. The theory of linear prediction has its origin in probability theory. One of the principal applications of the probability theory is in the estimation of a random quantity from a certain available data. Let us consider the problem of prediction of a sampled value based upon its past values. Let us take the case of a first order predictor where the present sample value that is y n is to be predicted from its past value that is y of n minus 1. Thus as you can see in equation number 1 the predicted value of y n that is represented as y cap n is given as a times y of n minus 1 where a is a real constant. The prediction error which is denoted by En is given as Yn minus Y cap N. Or we can say by keeping the value of Y cap N, we can see that En error is nothing but Yn minus A times Y of N minus 1. Now we have to determine the mean square error. So that will be given by this equation. As you can see, we have taken the expectation operator in this and therefore this to be minimum uh, with respect to all these parameters mainly a here the constants so it should be equal to zero and we can write it like this equation number six expectation en curly en by curly a that should be equal to zero now, if we substitute En from equation number 3 as Yn minus A times Y of N minus 1, we can get this equation as E, En 
into y n minus 1 equal to 0. So this equation number 7 is known as the orthogonality relation that is it says that error function e n and y of n minus 1 that is the past value of the output are uncorrelated. So now if we back substitute e n then we can get this equation that expectation y n minus a y of n minus 1 into y of n minus 1 is equal to 0. Now if we want to write in terms of autocorrelation we can write as r y y 1 because auto it is autocorrelation so we are keeping y n y is equal to a times r y y 0. So now how we can calculate this optimum value of a it can be r y y 1 divided by r y y 0 that is autocorrelation r time instant of 1 by the autocorrelation with time lag of 0. Then the corresponding minimum mean square error is considered as you can see in this equation number 11. So it can be uh, kept as again we can keep the value e n and one we have substituted e n as y n minus y cap n. So by keeping again the value of y cap n as a times of y n minus 1 you can get this equation. And if we open this equation, you will get uh, expectation en into yn minus a times expectation en into y of n minus 1. So by virtue of this equation 9, the second term in equation, as we have seen, these signals are uncorrelated. So that will be 0. So uh, back substituting en, it follows that this minimum mean square error is expectation yn minus a times of yn minus 1 dot yn. That is we can write it is equal to r y y 0 minus a times r y y 1. So now substituting equation number 8 uh, in 15 we can calculate the minimum mean square error that is given as in brackets 1 minus a square into r y y 0. So now let us consider the significance of this equation 17 what we have uh, derived in this in terms of realization. So we are calling it as correlation canceller realization. So from figure you can observe that the upper output is the prediction error this e uh, you can see this e n whose average power has been minimized and lower output is the predicted waveform as you can see y cap n that is a times of y n minus 1. So the original signal we can write now as the sum of two parts that is the predicted uh, value plus the error function or the prediction error. So this first term y cap n is equal to a y of n minus 1 is highly correlated with y of n minus 1 which serves as an input to the multiplier. You can see here that is the input to this multiplier. The second term that is en by virtue of orthogonality relation as we have seen in equation number 7 is completely uncorrelated with y of n minus 1 as we have seen the expectation of en into y of n minus 1 was 0. So the input part simply provides the two inputs to the correlation canceller. Since these two inputs are yn and y of n minus 1 are correlated, they try to cancel any correlation that may exist between these two signals. In other words, it tries to remove any signal correlations that might be present in y n. Now we can realize this above filter as you can see in this diagram. So we can take the z transform as you can see uh, it shows a first order prediction filter. <coughs> the transfer function of this can be obtained as 
uh, we can say az which is given as ez by y, yz by converting that to z transform and taking the reciprocal to obtain this transfer function so it will be 1 minus az inverse now let us consider the second order prediction case so the equation for that is given as yn equal to a1 y of n minus 1 plus a2 y of n minus 2. Now so we can define again the prediction error. We are keeping e2 because it is a second order prediction filter. So again the prediction error is given as yn minus y cap n. And again, the minimum mean square error can be computed as you can see in this equation number 2. It is given as expectation uh, yn minus a1 yn minus 1 minus a2 y of n minus 2. We can say whole square of that. Now, with respect to parameters a1 and a2, because uh, in previous case we had only one parameter that was a, but in this we have two parameters that is a1 and a2 so we have to differentiate equation with respect to a1 and a2 and by following the same procedure as we have seen in the case of first order prediction so uh, for that we can get the optimum value of a1 and a2 they can be determined by solving the set of linear algebraic equations as you can see here a1 r y y 0 plus a 2 r y y 1 it is equal to r y y 1 and similarly a 1 r y y 1 plus a 2 r y y 0 is equal to r y y 2 and the corresponding mean square prediction error is obtained again uh, you can see here equation number 24 so that is given as r y y 0 minus a 1 times of r y y 1 minus a2 times of r y by 2 and you can uh, we can solve this and we can write in form of matrix so this is the matrix representation of these equation number 23 and 24 so we can calculate this means minimum mean square error by solving these matrix equations so now we can see the realization of this second order a filter by taking its z transform and then finally representing as a filter so the input in this uh, to the canceller is yn and the secondary input you can see here we have y of n minus 1 which is further multiplied with a1 and we have y of n minus 2 which is further multiplied with a2 so this canceller tries to remove even more sequential correlations than the first order predictor. So the corresponding transfer function we can say it will be uh, e2z by yz which is 1 minus a1z inverse minus a2z inverse. Now following in a similar way we can uh, design a pth order linear predictor which can be built based on the past p minus 1 observed values of yn but that require solving p linear algebraic equations to obtain the minimum mean square error as we have seen in case of second order we uh, got two equations to solve uh, but if we have pth order then it there should be p linear algebraic equations to obtain the minimum mean square error which is very difficult so uh, for improving this we'll move to another uh, model which can be described by this linear prediction theory that is auto regressive model that we'll take in next lecture and for these topics again you can refer the book by dc reddy that is biomedical signal processing principles and techniques so for now thank you so much